Hello everybody, this is uh, the technician at Parts Guru and today I am very excited that I will be displaying you how to disassemble and break the mystery behind the brew group from Jura machines. Uh, Jura machines have this uh, been long a very quiet and mysterious uh, brew group that nobody could open or have difficulty in how to open. Uh, we are going to break that uh, uh, barrier and bring you the demonstration video to show how this brew group can be installed or uh, refurbished. The brew group as it is in my hands here is uh, complete and it is. this is how we sell and ship to customers. Uh, generally the items that we have additional to this is a scraper that will be mounted on one side and that scraper will clean the piston surface if there is any grounds attached or uh, sticking to it. So this is the home position in which the, the cup has its bottom all the way down as far as it can go. The large gear is on the upper side with about three to three and a half rings above the block. So in order to start the disassembly of this brew group, we will turn this gear all the way up so that the four rings above this block, they will go down in it. And in this position, you will see that the, the coffee grounds cup here, the bottom has come up all the way. And this will be in the lowest position when the brew group is in the home position. The reason most frequently you see the error 8 code is because this bottom plate for the ground cup is not going all the way to take the brew group into home position and start a new cycle. As a result, the E8 uh, error code has to be removed only by disassembling this piece, cleaning it, lubricating the parts inside so that it doesn't have any obstruction or uh, slowed down movement due to lack of lubrication that it will not go to the home position and the error code will come up. I tried to bring this wheel to the position where the brew group will go to the home position but I am not able to turn it all the way because two reasons, the o-rings are worn and the o-rings and the moving channel for this uh, entire assembly to go up and down that needs lubrication. It is very dry. So in order to uh, assess what parts we need for refurbishing this brew group, I have laid out the, uh, the parts that we need. These two large o-rings, they are for the pistons. There are two pistons moving uh, in opposite directions to compact the coffee and this two o-rings they need to be replaced and lubricated before uh, they are uh, uh, before closing the brew group. These o-rings when you remove the old ones make sure that you have cleaned the space for the new o-rings to seat very well otherwise you will have still the problems. These two o-rings are for the riser tube which is in this location that the pistons as they are going up and down the riser tube will have one o-ring on the top and one in the bottom of that tube to seal the water not going anywhere else but passing through the coffee. Now in these uh, uh, two o-rings the story is the models E, F, C and S. These models they have two o-rings and that is why we have displayed here two o-rings that are a part of the uh, brew group refurbishing kit. The rest of these five uh, o-rings and these two gaskets, this is called a lip gasket because it is folded over and if you cut a cross section it will be like a U. Uh, these two gaskets, this one o-ring and the two silicone o-rings, they go in reassembling and disassembly and reassembling of the drainage valve which is always at the bottom of the brew group and this drainage valve is where the entry and exit of water is always coming through. The drainage valve has this spring-loaded little plug here which has to be pushed in to open the water channel going into the coffee. 
blue group. So sometimes uh, this is in the machine uh, displayed by, by opening with a, a magnet valve that will be like a pin and it will push this in to open the water inlet. The next step is now for me to disassemble the uh, brew group and in order to do that the first thing is that I have raised this large gear as far up as it can go and in that position then we will start working on the lower end. This side, the lower half of the brew group has two sides, one on this side and the other one this. If you can remove this two sides easily then you are a winner. And right now I will show you the way this is on the side connected to the brew group is with four hooks which are very simple to unhook if you know the position and where they go. This is the first hook here because it is visible so I am showing you the way it is uh, showing out because it has been pressed in from that side and if you want to release it you just by a finger can unhook this from this end and you see that the one side of the four corners has come up and same way you have it on the other side if you lift this up slightly the other side corner has come up and then there is a third one here I'm not sure if you can see it uh, that's the third body there and it can be also pushed out a little by a finger so we have removed the three corners we have released them the last one and as, as always the last one is the most difficult one because it is not difficult to unhook it but it is the location where it is hiding and it's very difficult to look at it how and where you can really easily I am not sure if you are able to see this uh, view but that is where in the corner for what you see is half portion of it because the hook part is even deeper and it will be difficult to locate it. Uh, I'm using this tool here to locate it and try to push it so that I can unhook the last. In order to remove the fourth one I am trying to uh, make it as easy as possible for you. You have to lay down this uh, brew group on the side and try to locate it from the bottom end. I think I have unhooked it. There you go. This is the uh, actual picture on the underside of the side. These are the four hooks. They have a little notch at the tip and that is what we have to push it away from its locked position and once you push it the, the three they come off but the fourth one is so deep on the other side that you have to locate this hook to push it. It's simple but the location makes it difficult. This is the tool I have tried and inserted and found this bottom portion of this because what you can see is the this much portion of the hook. It is deeper so you have to go with the screwdriver and move up to the top position and press it so it gets unhooked. Not very difficult but if you do it a couple of times then you will know how to do it. You will be a champ and the refurbishing of brew group will be a piece of cake. So I'm, I'm really thrilled that I'm able to demonstrate this and uh, make you do the refurbishing your own at your home. Don't have to send the machine to anybody. I will now open the other side. The three hooks are easy. You can lift them by even a finger. That's uh, because the access is easy. I have removed the two with the finger. I'll go to the other side. This piece is the one that I can see and I can just pull it away to unhook the third side. 
And again, I'll go there and uh, unhook the fourth one. Lay it down and find the position. There it is. The second time it was easy for me as well. So now the uh, sides have come off. The other pieces, they can be dismantled very easily. Now, one note of caution. It's not a warning. As you are disassembling the pieces, take pictures mark the parts that you removed in order as you are removing them and separating them so that you don't scratch your head and call anyone to give you some help. No, no, no. This is on your own. You have to do everything and make your way so that you know which way you have to go back. Now, The next step is to take this top block, which is keeping all the long assembly in place together. And that also is a very easy four corners. You have the notched corners and you have to un unhook them by using this uh, same tool, which is a simple tool. This one has come off. I will take the other one off here. So the two are off and the same way the third one and the top one, it, the whole thing has come off easily. So this is the block that is actually holding all the pieces together assembled in one brew group. So here, once you have taken the block, this side comes off, this side comes off. The gear can be taken off all the way. This uh, tube is the one that is holding the uh, piston to move up and down freely. But right now it is very loose because the block has been removed from the top so it is loose. But otherwise it will move snugly inside up and down. And as I remove this you will see the, the piston gaskets. This one is very dry and this can cause restricted movement and it will not allow the brew group to return to the home position. And so we, we as a part of that refurbishing, we remove the old one, clean this space so that we have good room for the new gasket to go on. Now inside it here is the riser tube, which is the tube that moves with the piston without allowing water to go anywhere except through the coffee. Now this tube comes off by twisting it to the left and lifting it up. There is an o-ring at the bottom and there is an o-ring at the top. These two o-rings have to be replaced. Now, in the bottom part of it is the valve which builds the pressure and would not allow the water to push through unless it has the tension of the spring overcome by the pressure. This spring will resist water going through the coffee until the pressure builds up to 9 bars. So that's the secret and this valve is at the bottom of the riser tube. Once we have removed the top gear and the riser tube with the piston, upper piston, we now go to the side. This is a bushing here, which is like a spacer, but this spacer is a very significant part and it tends to fall off. It easily drops out and you will see that the simple structure of this is so significant in moving these in four different movements, but also this part is not available as a part that you can order. Otherwise, we would have included this in the kit. 
uh, I am sure that so many customers have lost it and feel sorry about it and try to find it. So uh, the secret to saving this is even if it falls off, it's best always, number one, to work in a lighted area, well lighted area, so that you see exactly what you are doing and what the parts look like. And if there's any of these parts or any other part that falls off, then it will be on that space where you're working and you can recover it. Do not try to do it like some customers did. Do it in the sink or in the kitchen. That's not the place for this work to be done. So I have removed that spacer. There is another one on the other side. I will remove this. Then I will slide the drainage valve. It easily slides out because there is no restriction to lock it in position. Having removed the spacer from one side of this plate, we have another one on the bottom below it. So I will lift that a little to jerk that uh, other spacer out. So we have removed from both sides two each on either side, one and uh, one on the face and one below it and the other side also has the same two, two plus two, four spacers, you remove them. Ready. Now the brew group is being uh, dis dismantled and one of the next steps here is the stainless steel rod that is connecting the two sides. They, again, if you have noted, I'm just using one simple screwdriver to unhook most of the parts. Now this one has a e-clip that is locking the, uh, the metal rod on both ends. And the e-clip is not very difficult to remove. You just insert the screwdriver with one edge and pop that out. This is what we call as a C-clip or E-clip. This is more like an E-clip. So I have removed one from one side then I will remove the other. That came off. Two of these E-clips, they are out and then you have to remove this rod by hammering it from one side and put your screwdriver and hit it with the oh that was easy uh, it fell off itself easily but sometimes it is necessary to hammer it with gentle small hammer uh, uh, hits so this is uh, also removed now as a part of the disassembly After I have disassembled this uh, stainless steel rod, the entire lower assembly is now free to move around. So the easy way is now to remove the lower piston, which is a little fragile piece. And that is also another part that is not available for sale anywhere. So be careful. Uh, this uh, lower piston is very fragile and it is lodged into a very um, secure position. It should not break, but sometimes it does break because of the lack of uh, lubrication and unclean uh, position that it is uh, inside. In order to remove this, you turn this piece. Here is the lower piston and I have to press it. So I will now press these two uh, pieces on the sides and holding my top portion with the fingers I will press this so that the piston will pop out from the other end here this has gotten free this is a very uh, fragile part these are the uh, ribs on which these two gears inside it slides up and down. If you can see the plastic uh, gears inside. This is the piece that is coming through the two gears and those gears move this piston up and down to compact the coffee. And also these two gears and this piston should be returning to the lowest position in the bottom of that cup, compacting cup for the coffee grounds. And then there will be no 
error 8. But if this piston cannot go all the way down, then the error code 8 will appear as a warning. Um, and then machine would not work. Once we have squeezed the lower piston out, there it goes in the disassembled parts. And then we can remove the, the compacting cup housing as it is. We can slide it out easily. So this is where the coffee grounds collect and all that drama goes on for extracting coffee. What is left now is the little piece here with the two gears. Actually, you don't need to remove this. There is uh, no need if uh, you want to remove it anyway, you can. It's not very difficult, but we would rather leave it here inside and uh, after cleaning and lubricating and replacing the seals, we can use this to reassemble the parts. Um, this is now a, a stage where all the parts have been disassembled and the hulk, the frame of the brew group can be left alone. And we will now show you all the parts that have been disassembled. The two sides that were the first we removed, then the second one is the square block that we unhooked from the top, then we removed the gear from the riser tube, and then we tried to remove the drainage valve. Look at its face. Uh, this is how it is from both sides. The drainage valve has this piece facing the back of the brew group, and when you slide it off, it comes out, and you can see the inner side of the drainage valve has a tube with an o-ring and this is where water will enter from this inlet because the Teflon tube or any other uh, connection for water feeding that comes and connects here when the magnet valve pushes this in it will open the inlet in from here the water will go through come out on the other side through this tube and this little guy, the lower piston, as it is going up and down, so in the home position it's going to come and seat here and seal with this o-ring. I'm just showing it so that you know the position so in case you are lost then you will connect from this explanation that the piston is going up and down in the home position it has to come down all the way and seal with this o-ring. If it doesn't then you cannot make espresso and the machine will show you the error 8 code. So this is one uh, that I just wanted to show you. Now once the water starts to push through this piston, this piston will allow the water to come through this little hole. If you can see this, this little hole will allow the water to go in through the coffee, then through the upper piston and the riser tube and out for uh, dispensing the coffee through the faucet. So that's about the internal hydraulic uh, way how the water moves. In this brew group, the most important parts that should have a smooth movement and sealing that those parts are these three. The lower piston with the o-ring gasket here, the drainage valve which has its own o-ring seals and water passage and this uh, little valve that opens to let the water in and the riser tube seals those also allow the water and build the pressure. Now I will show you the next step to remove this riser tube it's very easy. The riser tube is locked into two spaces here with little notches. If you can see this movement, you have to turn it so that it will unlock from this little riser notch here. And then you can easily remove it. In the bottom of this is a valve. This is the spring and the, the check valve. The check valve and the spring, they are actually playing an important role to let the water in against a tension of this spring, which, in other words, 
this tension will build a pressure of 9 bar before the check valve will allow the water to go up through the coffee. And that's one uh, essential part of making good espresso that the extraction should be 9 bars. So this upper piston, this has uh, its own gasket o-ring and you can remove this, toss it, you have the new uh, o-ring gasket from the kit, you replace it after washing this space with a brush. Now one comment here about the dealing and how to handle the o-rings. Never use any tools to remove the o-rings with any metal or pointed uh, tool because no matter how careful you are it will still have some damage on the o-ring so it's best to use your fingers and hands squeeze the o-ring on wherever it is and just uh, slide it out uh, easy and I can do that for this small one also here you can see that I will squeeze it to rise above so that you can find space to push it out and remove it that way so here it is. It's not very difficult, it's just a question of how you do it, but be gentle with the O-rings because they are actually sealing the pressure and heat and water so you don't have to lose that by trying to use tools to remove the O-rings. Now the last one is to remove the screen in case you see that the screen is dirty. Uh, you need a Phillips screwdriver, that's the uh, only other tool I'm using now. Uh, unscrew this and see the back end of the screen, if it is dirty, clean that. Even if it is not clean, you can clean it, give the devil the share of uh, cleaning. Uh, that screw came off, you see this is the condition of the screen in the back, there's not really much deposit to block the passage of uh, water for filtration. So this is uh, again the last one that we have disassembled. All these parts, these are here, you need to clean them thoroughly and uh, dry them. You can use uh, coffee cleaner liquid which uh, we sell as a package with the descaler. Uh, we also suggest that if you have uh, easy uh, availability you can use uh, baking soda make a hot solution of baking soda that will remove and soften the deposits and uh, also that way you can use a soft brush to uh, clean the grooves here that uh, you cannot ordinarily reach with a finger so that's the see the deposits here they are you know this will make uh, the movement of the piston all these coffee deposits very difficult to move up and down and this is where we are trying to uh, refurbish the brew group by changing the gaskets clean the portions and the parts that will hamper the smooth movement of the brew group pistons up and down. That's the end of this disassembly and we will wash these parts and come back and show you putting this back together again. Hopefully that this will help you.